I'm on my way to see some friends who happen to live far in the mountains of Poland. They run a tiny, sustainable guest house and invited me to come see them. Ooh! Meet their animals and, well, not something I expected, but they definitely gave me some new ideas for life. I literally dream of having a place like this. First challenge of the day, getting there in a snowstorm. It's super slippery out here, but I'm in low gears, driving very, very slowly, just taking my time. I'm Ava and I'm a full-time adventurer. I want to bring you on a journey that's all about being brave, experiencing the world and feeling truly alive. My travels have been one hell of an adventure so far, but last summer I bought an old Land Rover Defender and converted it into an off-road expedition truck. I now wander around the world and live in my 4x4. Hit subscribe to join my adventure crew and watch real raw travel videos every week. This is pretty scary I gotta say I mean it's so slippery out here there's so much snow and it keeps falling um, lots of ice and it's getting dark probably the scariest road I've ever driven down This is actually the scariest driving experience I think of my life. I mean there's snow and ice everywhere, it's extremely slippery and Odyssey is just slipping around you know. I'm like I'm driving in, in low gears but I don't have snow chains. I mean nobody does actually on this road, I don't know how they're doing it. Um, I guess if you're a local you're maybe a bit more used to these kinds of conditions but it's pretty nerve wracking. Oh. Hey, this looks like the end of the road, so I'm gonna wait for the guys to pick me up from here because I don't think I can go up any further um, without snow chains. So I hope they come soon because it's pretty, pretty wild out here. <laughs> you can really feel the elements <laughs> dominating, <laughs> dominating you, dominating us little humans. <laughs> The road is pretty steep, pretty snowy, so we need a vehicle that doesn't have wheels, but these. All right, let's get inside and get going. So we're driving deeper and deeper into the forest, up the mountain, around trees, eventually leaving the snowy road behind and heading into the woods. Never in my life had I experienced a transfer like this to any guest house in the world. When the sun rose in the morning, I couldn't quite believe the beauty of this place. Immediately, I knew there was some kind of old magic here. Well, this isn't gonna work, so I have another idea. Yay! firewood <laughs> delivery <laughs> so now I have enough wood here to last me about um, a week <laughs> 
there's just something so special about, you know, a real wood fire. Just being able to sit here and watch the flames and warm yourself next to an actual, actual fire. And this is reason enough to actually learn how to make a fire from scratch. Not for like surviving out in the wild, but even for just making an actual fire inside a fireplace. So after the fire had warmed up the house sufficiently, I had a great idea how to make myself that little bit less warm and comfortable. Okay, life is all about challenging yourself and trying new things, right? Right? <laughs> so I've just decided to try something that I've never done before. So there is a bathtub here and on the other side of the camera, outside, there is plenty of fresh snow. Now if you put the two together, you get something that's wildly scary and exciting and very, very cold. So I don't know if you can already guess what that is, but I'm gonna have to just get on with it before I change my mind. Oh, oh it's so nice and warm. Okay, I think it's time. This was way colder than anything I experienced in Antarctica. What a weird feeling. I feel so crazy hot all of a sudden. Oh my god. That was fun. I might do that again. <laughs> okay, one more time. Okay, new challenge. Roll around all the way. Antarctica for this, you know? <sighs> Go ahead and do things that make you uncomfortable. Of course, listen to reason, but don't hesitate to do things that scare you once in a while. You might just discover a completely new way to have fun. Anyway, after thawing out a little bit, I went outside to explore. No matter how far I travel around the world, places like this really stay in my heart. They remind me just how much I'd love to learn how to, you know, make stuff, live simply. How much I'd love to be able to build a house one day with my own hands, far from the noise of the city where everything is so easy and convenient. Experience a connection with one plot of land, see it evolve through the seasons and one day maybe even call it home. <laughs> I got really freaked out by the dead cat on the microphone. I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> They're like, 
What is this? And they ran away. What's this? I'm sure you're gonna bite it. You're gonna try and bite it, aren't you? <laughs> this is not food, my friend. Meet Kasia and Leszek, my friends, and the lovely couple who poured their hearts and souls into building out this land. No, of the. Cześć. Jesteśmy w Gorcach, w górnej chacie. Ja jestem Kasia. To jest Leszek. Leszek, hej. Górni, z górnej chaty. No. <laughs> Mieszkamy wysoko w górach, na wysokości 930 metrów nad poziomem morza, gdzie mamy swoją górkę. Na tej górce znajdują się trzy domy, w jednym mieszkamy, dwa wynajmujemy dla gości, żeby pokazać im jak to wygląda życie, jak fajnie spędzić czas z rodziną. Czyli jesteście generalnie z miasta i wyprowadziliście się do natury, na wieś. Dlaczego? Znaczy, Widzieliśmy od razu, że chcemy żyć inaczej niż, niż w mieście. Kiedyś nie było korpo. Ja pracowałem w firmie komputerowej, no ale widzieliśmy, że dwa weekendy wolne, w miesiącu. wolne w miesiącu to nie dla nas i chcemy robić coś sami. No, jesteśmy manualni, umiemy dużo rzeczy robić i to nas kręci. A więc widzieliśmy, że sobie poradzimy wyjeżdżając z miasta. Nie chcieliśmy całego życia spędzać na swojej jakby spłacie tych kredytów, tylko chcieliśmy coś zrobić takiego, żeby żyć jakby na własną rękę. A więc postawiliśmy na, na jedną kartę, nie mając pewności, czy sobie poradzimy. Mm -hmm. Jak widać, udało nam się. Mm -hmm. So, this here is Kasia and Leszek's home. It's beautiful, traditional, wooden, just amazing. And then these three vehicles. This is how they uh, get around in winter. This is a pretty hardcore place to be in winter and you really need to come prepared. There is just no way that you can drive up here with a car, even with snow chains. So you need one of these winter beast machines. We're about to visit the alpacas that live out here. This is their shed. Oh, there's goats as well. <laughs> so there's all kinds of animals here. I mean, you know, goats, pretty, uh, pretty friendly. I gotta say, they're like, yeah, please pet me. Give me some cuddles. All right, let's go and uh, meet the alpacas. I've never touched, seen, experienced, met an alpaca ever before. This is my first time. They're pretty big, actually. Hey! Ah. Oh my god, you're so big! <laughs> Are you talking to me? What does this mean? Are we saying hello? Are you gonna bite me? Oh my god, <laughs> huge! Alright, so feeding alpacas. This is a little bit scary. Go on. <laughs> Alright, they're pretty gentle. This, ladies and gents, is how you feed an alpaca. You enjoying this? Yeah? <laughs> oh, I literally dream of having a place like this. A house like this, land like this, a hammock like this, all of this. I literally sit there every other day and I fantasize about the kind of house that I would like to have in the future. And a house in the woods, a wooden house in the woods is exactly, is exactly that. But you know what? Being here and realizing what Kasia and Leszek actually do around here, feeding the animals, taking care of the land, you know, just just managing and maintaining the whole thing, you realize that it's not so easy. You're not committing to a beautiful wooden house. You are committing to all the work involved in maintaining a giant piece of land. And then the reward is having a nice wooden house. <laughs> so maybe for now, I'll just satisfy myself with renting out a place like this every once in a while. 
because I don't think my life right now is something I could reconcile with this. Oh, that sounded really bittersweet. I'm happy with my life, I love my life. But one day, not now, one day. One day you'll see me making videos about building a wooden hut in the forest. Może też to wygląda jakbyśmy mieszkali i mamy sielankę całe życie, ale no to tak jakby no jest dużo pracy, mamy dużo zwierząt, w tym gospodarstwie naprawdę trzeba poświęcić dużo siły, czasu i serca, żeby to wszystko funkcjonowało. Pary tak jakby mieszkając same i przebywając 24 godziny na dobę razem, no to to jest taka duża weryfikacja, czy to, czy to jest to, czy lepiej się rozstać, czy lepiej wrócić do miasta Ewentualnie, i się mijać troszeczkę chociaż. Tak, ba chociaż się mijać, ale to się niestety zdarza, nie? To no. jest bardzo dużo par po prostu, które rzuciło wszystko, w sensie rzuciło życie takie miejskie i przeprowadziło się w góry, czy tam w ogóle nad jezioro, nie wiem, gdziekolwiek, to później no, okazywało się, że to nie jest dla nich, w sensie jakby ich związek na tym cierpią. Nie? Dokładnie. Żeby mieszkać w takim miejscu jak nasze, to trzeba być nie tylko romantykiem, ale mieć też jakby chęci do pracy rzeczywiście, bo życie tutaj wymaga czasami wielu poświęceń. In places like this, with no distractions, no TV, none of the usual chaos that surrounds us, you're kind of forced to slow down and stay still. A short while ago, I made an executive decision in my head that I would not feel guilty for taking time to rest. If you're anything like me, i.e. a total perfectionist, you will understand just how difficult that can be. But we are simply not made to be working and worrying around the clock. Listen, I'm taking my rest seriously these days. mission to complete. So I left a whole bunch of stuff inside Odyssey and Odyssey is at the bottom of that hill we came up. Um, so the mission is to go down the hill in the snow and retrieve all my stuff. But I guess the first step is actually getting out of the house because <laughs> it's we're a little bit blocked by all the snow. <laughs> Cool, well that'll do. <laughs> this is not the kind of place where you lock the doors. All right. Oh my God, this place is so amazing. Wow. <laughs> Big teddy bears. Big teddy bears. Here we go. Apparently, this is the fastest way to get down the hill. <laughs> I haven't sat in a sled in about 20 years. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> How do I break? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this thing goes really, really fast. Really fast. <laughs> 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 Once you get into 
of it. It's like pretty chill. I don't have to do anything much. Just go with the flow. Going up might be a little bit harder, so I've come prepared. I'm not gonna slide around wearing these on my feet. These are like little nano spikes. I haven't worn them before. They're completely new. Let's see, Let's see how this works. Traction control, pretty perfect so far. <gasps> Genius. This place has a magic and a charm all of its own. Zaczynaliśmy tutaj, to naprawdę nie mieliśmy dużego budżetu, było bardzo dużo rzeczy do zrobienia, nie było wody tak naprawdę no nie się było, okazało. Tak, 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 nie, nie było nic, nie? No, nie, nie było ogrzewania. Wsi nawet robi zakłady, czy wytrzymamy tutaj. Pierwszą zimę, tak, tak, dokładnie. A więc tak jakby no. Przyglądali nam się bacznie. Pokonaliśmy ich. We've been secretly having talks about me buying some land just over the hill over there, so let's see how that goes. This is not any ordinary hotel or guest house. I mean, Leszek and Kasia built this place themselves with their own bare hands, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. So um, just a quick little tour. This is the kitchen and dining area. And of course, with the fireplace. This is like my favorite place to be. But through here, there is another bedroom with a bathtub. <laughs> a bathtub, <laughs> so decadent. So you gotta go through here and then you enter um, the second bedroom, which is the one that I've been sleeping in. It's super cozy and super, super cute. I love this place. There's a shower room over there. And then when you go up the stairs, you discover like Narnia. Let's go up, let me show you what it's like. Well, if this was my house, <laughs> this would be the room that would be filled with like all the travel souvenirs, all my books, all that kind of stuff. This would be like the exhibition room. I would like live downstairs most of the time and then this would be the room where like in the summer you would come out here and like bask in the sunshine and relive all of your travel memories. That's the plan. <laughs> I want to show you something really, really cool. So um, in Poland we have this traditional craft called uh, makrame. These are like hand-woven decorations that you see a lot of in rural areas in Poland. And recently, just like with all artists and crafts, they've become super, super popular and the kind of craft has been revived in recent years. Yeah, you'll see these a lot in very, very traditional places in Poland. <laughs> Oh, 
Bardziej czujemy się bezpiecznie w naturze niż otoczeni dużą ilością ludzi, gdzieś wiesz, bloków, domów i takiej infrastruktury zorganizowanej. Dla nas to jest przerażające trochę, że ludzie tak bardzo ufają systemowi. Of course, after a couple of days, I had to leave Kasia and Leszek's mountain hut and get going. It felt magical and rejuvenating to be there. Well, I know I'll be back. But for now, we're off to a very different kind of destination. Coming up in the next episode.